Welcome back to this week's edition of the Risk Spotlight Operational Risk News Update. My name is Emily Jones, and today I'll be bringing you essential updates and insights from the world of operational risk drawn from the past week. All information shared here is sourced from the Risk Spotlight portal, the premier forward-looking service dedicated to operational risk content. Let's get started. The first update is about the recent developments surrounding the Mpox virus, which has sparked significant concern globally. The World Health Organization, WHO, has declared the Mpox outbreak a public health emergency of international concern, primarily due to the alarming spread of a new clade I variant in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, and other African countries. This variant is associated with a higher mortality rate and has been detected in regions that have never reported Mpox cases before, such as Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda. In 2024 alone, over 17,000 cases have been reported across Africa, with the DRC alone accounting for 15,664 cases and 537 deaths. Notably, the virus has now been detected outside Africa, with Sweden confirming its first case. The next update is about the alarming rise in ransomware attacks, as highlighted in a survey conducted by Sempris. This survey, which involved nearly 1,000 IT and security professionals, revealed that 83% of organizations were targeted by ransomware in the past year, with a staggering 74% of those victims facing multiple attacks within the same year. The consequences have been severe, leading to business closures, layoffs, and loss of customer trust. Despite many companies having cybersecurity plans, 78% of targeted organizations ended up paying ransoms, with 33% paying four times or more. Alarmingly, 35% of those who paid did not receive the promised decryption keys. The findings emphasize the critical need for robust identity recovery plans, as only 27% of respondents had dedicated backup systems for Active Directory, which is crucial for swift recovery. The report stresses the importance of board-level involvement in cybersecurity strategies, as regulations increasingly recognize cybersecurity as a key business issue. The next update is about the debut of three new quantum-safe encryption algorithms by the United States National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. This marks a significant milestone in the eight-year post-quantum cryptography project, where 82 algorithms from 25 countries were evaluated, resulting in the selection of 14 finalists. The announcement has been well-received by cybersecurity experts, emphasizing the urgent need for organizations to assess their quantum risk and transition to quantum-resistant algorithms. According to research by N-Trust and the Ponyman Institute, 27% of organizations have yet to consider post-quantum threats and 23% are aware but not planning. This is concerning as quantum computers capable of breaking standard encryption are approaching reality. The release of these algorithms is a proactive step towards safeguarding data against future quantum threats, encouraging organizations to prepare their security infrastructure accordingly. The next update is about the challenges in AI adoption highlighted by IBM's AI Readiness Barometer study. Although 85% of businesses recognize AI's potential, only 22% measure its value, and just 17% have a clear strategy. The study, covering five markets, reveals that only 4% of companies are truly AI-ready. It emphasizes the need for strong leadership, governance, and a solid data strategy, as many organizations struggle with expertise and integration, despite the potential of AI to improve efficiency through automation. The next update is about the Dutch Data Protection Authority, DPA, issuing guidance on the risks of using AI-powered chatbots like ChatGPT, particularly regarding personal data breaches. Employees have entered sensitive data into these chatbots, sometimes against company policy, posing significant GDPR risks. The DPA emphasizes the need for clear agreements between employers and employees on what data can be entered and suggests including contractual provisions with chatbot providers to prevent unauthorized data storage and use. The next update is about the Federal Reserve, OCC, and FDIC's recent request for information, RFI, on bank fintech collaborations. This RFI, published in the Federal Register, invites public input on 41 questions related to these partnerships, with comments due by September 30, 2024. While regulators see the benefits of these collaborations, 
they are concerned about risks and contractual compliance. The RFI seeks to determine if more guidance is needed to ensure banks maintain safety, compliance, and consumer protection standards without stifling innovation. The next update is about the recent 76% surge in investment fraud attempts in the first half of 2024, according to the Bank of Ireland and Red Sea. Most scams originate on social media, where criminals pose as legitimate firms. Disturbingly, 94% of people have been targeted, with text messages being the most common method at 89%. Fraudsters also retarget previous victims by pretending to help recover lost funds. Nicola Sadlier of Bank of Ireland stresses the need for vigilance against these scams. Now let me provide a quick update on key operational risk loss events that were reported in the media last week. The first update is about the new wave of SEC's crackdown on Wall Street firms for using unauthorized messaging apps like WhatsApp for business communications, leading to $390 million in fines across 26 firms. Major names like Ameriprise Financial, Edward Jones, and Raymond James each paid $50 million, while BNY's Pershing unit was fined $40 million. This enforcement effort, part of a broader crackdown started in 2021, has already collected over $2 billion in fines, emphasizing the importance of maintaining proper communication records to prevent fraud. The next update is on CrowdStrike, which received the most epic fail award at the DFCon Hacking Conference's Pune Awards, following a major IT failure. Last month, a faulty software update from CrowdStrike led to a global outage affecting over 8.5 million Windows devices, causing significant disruptions across various sectors, including airlines and banks. Despite the embarrassment, CrowdStrike's president, Michael Santonas accepted the award in person, emphasizing the importance of owning up to mistakes. He plans to display the trophy at CrowdStrike's headquarters as a reminder to employees of the incident's severity. The company is currently facing two class action lawsuits and potential legal action from Delta Airlines, which suffered substantial operational impacts due to the outage. Sentonas' candid acceptance of the award was met with applause from cybersecurity professionals, highlighting the value of accountability in the industry. The next update is about the Reserve Bank of India imposing penalties on five financial entities for regulatory violations. CSB Bank was fined approximately $224,000 for not adhering to guidelines on outsourcing risks and branch authorization. Union Bank of India received a penalty of around $128,000 for failing to comply with regulations on large common exposures and KYC norms. Muthut Housing Finance, Nido Home Finance, and Ashoka Vinyoga Limited were also penalized for various non-compliance issues. The last update is about raids conducted by the Enforcement Directorate in India on 14 premises associated with Corporate Power Limited and its promoters in connection with a massive bank loan fraud of approximately $480.7 million. The ED's investigation, based on a Central Bureau of Investigation FIR, revealed that the company allegedly manipulated project cost statements to secure loans, which were then diverted, resulting in a loss of about $1.354 billion, including interest, to the Union Bank of India. And there you have it a whirlwind tour of last week's operational risk landscape. If you want to read more about the topics I have covered and review additional content on emerging operational risk topics, then please log in to the Risk Spotlight portal if you are a subscriber or go to riskspotlight.com to sign up for a free trial. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, stay safe and keep those risks in check.